When we think about sets, they seem like these objects that have no tangible benefit. But it turns out that we can think about sets as being folders on your computer. So let's think about that relationship. So a set and a folder on a hard drive can actually be thought of as analogous to one another. So you, you may have, you know, on your, on your computer, if you're running a PC, you might have your C drive. And in that C drive, you have some sort of folder, um, like documents. I'm not giving the exact path, but inside of that folder, you know, you may have a file called uh, me.jpg. And when we think about folders, so let's imagine that these two things are folders, and we'll just call this one, we'll call this one docs. And inside of this docs folder, we're going to have some files. So let's say that we have f1.doc, so this is some Word document file, and f2.doc, and f3.doc. Then let's say also that in a similar folder, which we'll call fdocs, that we also have f1.doc and we have f2.doc. So you might imagine this as you've created two folders somewhere on your hard drive. Uh, one folder is called docs, one folder is called fdocs, and you've probably done this before where you've had the same file in perhaps multiple folders. So this folder itself can be thought of as a set. And while we typically don't in mathematics label sets by their full name, we certainly can. So usually we use a capital letter, but let's call this set uh, docs just for the sake of argument. And inside of this set, we have three elements, which are these three files. So we have f1.doc, f2.doc, and f3.doc. So now we've adopted our set notation, or the set roster notation, and inside of the set fdocs, so we'll just call that fdocs, that contains the two files f1.doc and f2.doc. Now a computer uh, oftentimes wants to find similarity, so if you're going to, for example, copy the full files, let's say you wanted to take these files and copy them over here into the docs folder. Well, if you've ever done this, you often get a message saying, well, f1.doc already exists in the docs folder. Are you, do you want to replace it? Do you want to create a copy of it? What do you want to do? Um, so when the computer is actually operating on these files, it is working in terms of this set-like structure. So now we can answer questions about this. For example, is fdocs a subset of docs. And so now we can look at fdocs and say, well, f1.doc is in there, f2.doc is in there. Are those two files also inside of the docs folder? And the answer is yes. So this is going to be a true statement. And again, one way that we can think about this symbol here is sort of like the less than or equal to is this set less than or equal to this set? In other words, does it contain everything that is also in the docs folder? If we flip that around and we say, is docs a subset of fdocs? Well, that's going to be a false statement because not all of the files inside of docs are also in fdocs. In fact, f1.doc, well, that's inside of fdocs f2.doc, well that's inside of fdocs, but f3.doc is missing in fdocs, therefore we cannot say that this folder docs is a subset of the fdocs folder. So in a future video we'll actually look at how what happens when we start to have nested folders within folders, and that's where the subset operator and element operators become super handy.